hello welcome back to my channel it is Taj aka Mataj Massage and this is Mataj Midas Living I hope you are good I hope you've had a blessed week if you tuned into the most recent video that I uploaded which was titled oh my gosh I can't even remember now ah oh, God says don't settle is settled that's it that's what it's called I hope it encouraged you and I hope it gave you the messages that you were looking for, or the confirmations that you needed in regards to the struggle of this journey, being chosen one of the most high, especially if you have been in that Job season like myself. This particular video that I'm doing today though, I think I mentioned it in the last video, it's more of a prophetic warning but I didn't want to start the year with that and funnily enough I got confirmation about it today which is July July is definitely not July January 10th 2023 and I got this message when the 23rd of November I received this specific prophetic warning but before we get into that, if we vibe, join the tribe, make sure you like, comment, share and subscribe. Also make sure you hit the notification bell so that you're notified of when I have new content out. Um, I'm hoping this video isn't a very long one, but there is a lot of information that I've received. And it is a prophetic warning on the religious spirit. And I've been sitting on this, as I said, since the 23rd of November when I received the word and I didn't get com like full confirmation on it today until until today. Uh, get your words out. And that was while watching a message that I was drawn to on YouTube by, who was it by? Marcus Rogers. And... The title of his video is Why do anointed people face such heavy attacks and spiritual warfare? And with everything that I've personally been going through, I was drawn to it straight away. And I was like, this video has to be for me. And then as the video went on and he was mirroring a lot of the things that I got through in my prophetic message, which I'm going to be delivering to you guys today. I was like, yeah, this message is 100% for me. And the message I received was definitely a word from God. Even I was already sure of that. But extra confirmation is always a good thing. There's also scripture to go with this word that I've got as well. And it also reminded me of some other messages that I received ages and ages ago. Like when I first started this YouTube channel. There was one called jealousy envy and murder and that was a mixture of research that I'd done prophetic messages I'd received and also um teachings from other people in the YouTube community and it was basically about how Satan works through people and how that can manifest into jealousy envy and in some cases even murder so for example um Saul and David is a major example of that um and then another video which I posted I don't even remember when now but it was titled the modern day Pharisees versus God's chosen so this particular video that I'm filming now is a warning to those who are under the religious spirit and it's and the dangers of the religious spirit so hopefully it can help break people who are under I guess the spell of the religious spirit and also for those who come into contact with people who are under the religious spirit to give more of an understanding as to how and why people act the way they act and kind of where it stems from and hopefully it will give you some insight and understanding what I will also do is all those videos that I did mention, like two of mine and the Marcus Rogers video, I will make sure that I will link them below so that you can cross reference them if you feel you need to, if you have the urge to, either way they'll be there. Before I get into this prophetic word, I've also got some scripture um, 
dotted around I've got loads of notes on my laptop so I will be looking up and looking down at the screen and then if the Holy Spirit has anything else that needs to come through it will come through but I'm hoping this video won't be too long but as I said there are quite a few notes hopefully I won't go off on too many tangents but as I said on previous occasion this is not my channel this is God's channel so whatever he needs to say I'm just simply a vessel so before I get into the word I will just say a quick prayer and then we'll get started thank you God for leading me to create this YouTube channel so that I can help fulfill your will on this earth I pray that you anoint my tongue so that I can say the right words and the right messages that need to get through to whoever comes across this channel whoever comes across this video i hope this word is well received and provides the information the confirmation the education the spiritual understanding and hopefully a way to a way to you father i pray that those who receive this message also receive you at the same time and know that these messages are from you and I'm just simply a vessel and I pray that those who have eyes to see will see, those who have ears to hear will hear this message and can help them get into alignment with the right path that they are on. And I also pray that if anyone comes across this video and that they are under the influence of the religious spirit i pray that this video helps break that spell that has been cast over them and helps them shift and dismantle the religious spirit that is that is over their lives whether it is them directly under the influence of this spirit or whether it is other people around them that influenced under this spirit and in turn they are being influenced in that way but as I said I pray that this message is received well received clearly to those who need to see it and hear it in Jesus name I pray amen okay let's get into it then so the first thing I've got here is the religious spirit can take you down a dark path a warning from God to the modern day Pharisees. So that is most likely going to be the title of this video. Um, I want to kind of break down what the religious spirit is or how it operates. So the easiest way to say that is how the Pharisees were with Jesus. So they can be, they can say that they're following the law, like down to an absolute T, but they can't recognise or it's not that they can't recognise, I would say that the person who's under the influence of the religious spirit cannot recognise someone who, is, who actually has the true anointing um, on them. And instead, this religious spirit masks that and then it gets the person to, the person who's under the religious spirit, it gets them to see someone who is anointed as the enemy when they're not actually the enemy. And it actually brings them even further away from God, even though they believe in their heart of hearts that they are actually getting close to God when that's not the case at all. It's like a, what's, it's like a, a spirit of deception. So it makes you think that you're doing good when you're not really doing good. And the heavier you are under the influence of that particular spirit, the harder it is to get out and it leads you further and further and further away from God even though it will have you believing that you are getting closer and closer to God when that is not the case at all this spirit can literally lead you to damnation that's just come through now um which makes sense why this particular video is a prophetic warning so I've got yeah it can make you hate God without even realizing it and have you saying you're doing what you're doing in the name of God the next thing I've got is that one there is dangerous and can slip under the radar because you'll think you're hearing from God, but really it's Satan. He is the father of lies and came to steal, kill and destroy. And that is John 10.10, 10, which specifically says the thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. We know that's what the enemy does. So obviously he's going to have you thinking that what he's saying is the truth when it's not 
the truth because he is the father of lies before i go full on into the word what i want to do is give some examples of where i have experienced people under the religious spirit in my own life personally although at the time it happened i didn't realize it was the religious spirit i was just like oh my gosh this person just turned on me why i don't understand oh, oh my gosh this person thinks i'm demonic i don't understand because i definitely have a connection with god and things like that so hopefully this will give you some insight into people that might be around you and in your circle that might be under the religious spirit and you'll be able to point them out or if people come into your life who are under that spirit hopefully this will help you fish them out so the first example i'm going to try and condense them because i don't want to be chatting 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 all the time so the first one was someone i was really really close friends with for years and years we had loads of things in common whether it be work our kind of views on life and similar things on our spiritual journeys and then along this journey this particular friend um before our relationship changed she found christ so i assumed that she always believed in the same god as me i didn't know but she it turns out she was more into the new age thing and the universe etc etc whereas for me god has always been god i've always believed in god jesus the holy spirit i've just not always been directly in alignment with what he has for me but that's always been my firm beliefs i've always had a relationship with god the god of abraham isaac and jacob from like forever basically i've always had that belief and i've always had that relationship since i was a child i've just not always actively walked that path like there's been times where i've been in the world more etc even after i got baptized at 19 yeah when i got re-baptized at 19 i still dipped in and out of being really in the world but yeah as i said the faith has always been there and then so yeah she found christ and she was finding it quite difficult she felt like she was being quite like judged and stuff and i was like always there for her and i was just like this is amazing for you this journey is great i was nothing but supportive um and i remember she was planning on getting baptized and i was like that's amazing when you want to do that i will 100 percent be there for you and i remember she said something like um she's like oh we could perhaps get baptized together and i was like well i already had my second baptism when i was 19 but whatever you want to do for yours i'm there for you and i remember we were talking about perhaps going abroad to do it somewhere and doing like a holiday because we hadn't been on holiday together even though we'd been friends for quite a while it just hadn't happened so that was kind of in the pipeline so i was like oh yeah that's something to look forward to and then I remember she came to my birthday i had like a little event at my flat and um she was going through some trials and stuff and i was checking in on her to make sure she was okay and then saw her at my birthday and then i think it was like a month later yeah it was about a month later went onto instagram and she posted a video and she got baptized she didn't tell me that she got baptized i was like that's weird and I, I can't lie I got in my feelings about that I was quite upset and then since after that she didn't really talk to me I never heard from her again basically and I was just like that's weird but I wish her well and then I don't know how long after it after that now Mm, so that was like the may and then the january the following year so that would have been january last year i just had a feeling that something was gonna be brought to my attention about this particular person there was just something in my spirit lo and behold i got sent an image from my sister she's like and it was from this person's page and i was like what the hell is this and it was an image with me two other people i know and this friend who is no longer my friend and i was like what is that and basically it was just like this image saying that it was it was like a slideshow of images so it was like images of where 
she'd been in the world and stuff and then it transitioned to a point where she then got baptized and then all these new images of since she's found christ but the picture that i was in with other people that i knew and with her it was like <laughs> we were the one <laughs> we were the ones who had pulled her into this world of sin Basically, it was like a defamation of my character and the characters of other people in this image, saying that we were like really bad and a bad influence on her. And then now that she's found Christ, she's found this new life. She doesn't need these people anymore. And that's that. And I'm like, hold on. But the whole time we've been friends, I've shown you nothing but the love of Christ. Like when you didn't have anything, I was there for you. Like when you didn't have money, when you didn't have food. I checked in to make sure you're okay when you said you were alone and said that you didn't have anyone when you'd found Christ I was the one who was there and supportive of you and you even said like I don't have no one you're the only one who's like supporting me through this blah 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 blah. and I'm like okay but then what's with this kind of flip side thing and then after that I started to see signs of like the religious spirit the religious spirit is also what gets people into cults. I just want to put that out there as well. And um, yeah, the videos that and content that she then started posting on her social media did make me quite concerned to the point where I, I believe that she's been brainwashed by someone or a group of individuals and she is now under the attack of the religious spirit um i do continue to keep her in my prayers and i hope that the spell is broken but yeah it's it's scary because if she wasn't under the influence of this religious spirit she would see that i have the holy spirit in me and that i have nothing but good intentions and a pure heart towards her and and anyone that, that i come across in life I'm not saying that i'm perfect not saying that I'm holier than thou because I am not but one thing hand on heart I can always say is that my intentions are always pure but then that's that um same thing happened to me again on another occasion out and about doing a food shop I think in my local area and this street preacher comes up to me he's like oh like, do you believe in God blah, blah 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 and I was just like yeah I was like me and God are really good actually they kind of proceeded to go into the supermarket where I was heading and he's like do you go church and I was like no I don't go church but um you know you don't have to go to church to have church and to have a relationship with God and he started just rabbiting on oh you're meant to go to church blah 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 yadi 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 and I was thinking well in scripture it doesn't actually say that it's like where two or more are gathered in his name that is what we call church church is also a way of life um i can't remember which scripture that is from and i probably misquoted it pretty badly but it's along those lines so i have church all the time so if i'm having a conversation with my dad about god and different things like that or with friends and we're just talking about different aspects about life praising god talking about how he's moved in our lives our faith walks etc etc those things are also classed as church and he just wasn't really listening to what i was saying i was thinking yeah i can't deal with this right now you know when you just feel like you're being judged and I was just like I'm really not here for it I just want to do my food shop so I kind of just swiftly moved on I was just like whatever but someone like that is definitely heavily indoctrinated under religion rather than moving in the spirit otherwise again he would have recognized the holy spirit in me the same way that other people that are genuinely filled with the holy spirit can see the holy spirit in other people we might not always agree on things but we love each other and we can appreciate that all of our individual relationships with our creator are completely different because we're all individuals at the end of the day um and the last one is i've got an old family christian friend told me that because i have crystals i'm demonic and i was just like oh my gosh but 
I just find it funny like I get new age uses crystals and it's in a demonic way or in a deceptive way but when I have my crystals and like use my crystals and have them around me it's an appreciation of God's creation I've I've actually always been drawn to crystals since a young age since primary school and I never understood why I just always been drawn to crystals oh my gosh they're so pretty like these I love these I used to like collect them I still collect them now it's not changed and it's not since I've been on this journey waking up to the fact that I am a Hebrew Israelite and then looking at scripture from that perspective is how I kind of realized oh that's where the connection is and um so i've got here but as a hebrew israelite we were assigned different crystals to represent our tribes and crystals were also used to decorate our holy robes for worship i think there is a scripture in exodus relating to that i'm just going to find that and i will let you know so the particular um scripture i want to focus on in regards to crystals here for this message is in Exodus and it's Exodus 28, 9 to 12 and then I'm going to skip over the rest and then go from 17 to 20. But this particular part is talking about the priest's garment. So from 9 to 12 it says, you shall take two onyx stones and engrave them, sorry, and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel, six of their names on the one stone and the names of the remaining six on the other stone in the order of their birth. As a jeweler engraves signets, so shall you engrave the two stones with the names of the sons of Israel. You shall enclose them in settings of gold filigree. And you shall set the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as the stones of remembrance for the sons of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord on his two shoulders for remembrance. So that's talking about the garments that Aaron wore when he was going into the, um, the holy place of worship. So these particular garments had to be worn. Then from 17 to 20, it says... You shall set in it four rows of stones, a row of sardius, topaz and carbuncle shall be the first row and the second row an emerald, a sapphire and a diamond and the third row a jacinth, an agate and an amethyst and the fourth row a beryl, an onyx and a jasper. They shall be set in gold filigree. This is talking about the breast piece of judgment. So again, specific um, garments that the Israelites had been instructed to create under the instruction of the Most High. Definitely nothing demonic about it there, but as we know, Satan likes to hijack things that are of God and make it his own and deceive people to use them in a way that takes God out of the equation and that's what makes it demonic not the items themselves so yeah this person said I was demonic because I'm attracted to crystals and I have a crystal collection but anyways <laughs> so as I mentioned before I've always been attracted to crystals since I was a kid never knew why but obviously as I've been on this spiritual journey dabbled a little bit in new age but god was still always at the forefront for me and learned a bit more about crystals that way and then also now i've veered back into full alignment with what god has for me and i've learned about crystals from that aspect and i'm like that's why i've always been attracted to crystals it makes sense god was calling me to them it's part of my heritage as an israelite but anyways back to individuals that are under the religious spirit demonic definitely sounds mad alongside religion but that is what it is having you believe that your actions are in line with the name of our savior jesus christ but really it's in the name of the antichrist it's actually mad to think that like people have been deceived so much that they really think that what they're doing is in the name of God and it isn't and that's scary that's more deceptive than any other 
demonic entity that could take over you like being under jealousy like you know you're not meant to be jealous even though the enemy can twist things and make you think that you're allowed to have these feelings but for you to be under the religious spirit you're saying things in the name of god you're genuinely believing that you're doing things in the name of god and living for god and really you're completely against him and you're against his chosen ones it's it's scary i've actually got that's actually mad and sad and scary that's how it's been written it's mad because this is actually the first time i'm reading these notes because it came through as a channeled message and i'm only going through it now like properly there's actually people who will never break out from under the religious spirit and unforgiveness is also a side effect of that spirit that's what god told me and obviously that leads us to the lord's prayer in matthew 6 which says forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us but those who are under the religious spirit they won't like they won't forgive people they they find it hard or they can find it hard to forgive others especially those that are truly anointed because even though they don't see it because they're under the spell of this spirit we're seen as the enemy we're seen as demonic even though the spirit that they're under is actually demonic and that's what i mean about the enemy being the father of lies he really has people thinking that they're doing god's work and fighting against god's enemies when they're really the enemy of god so back to matthew 6 um under the lord's prayer is matthew the full prayer is matthew 6 9 to 14 i believe i'll just double check i actually prefer the king james version of this it's like the i guess the more traditional way we say that prayer so instead of trespasses it says it actually says debts in this version is it to 14 no it's 9 to 13 but the part i want to focus on is after the actual prayer itself and it says for if you forgive others their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive others their trespasses neither will your father forgive your trespasses and that's verse 14 to 15 of matthew 6. so as i was saying before people under the religious spirit tend to get to a point where they have a lot of unforgiveness in their heart because they've been deceived to believe that they are right and so if there's unforgiveness in their heart then how are they going to be forgiven by god because we can't be forgiven by god unless we forgive and that's a bit right there in scripture and obviously the enemy wants you separated from god and unforgiveness is one of the key things that will really separate you from god and lead you down a path of destruction and while under this particular religious spirit as well as being on this path to destruction at the same time it will have you believe that you're on the narrow path to eternal glory when really you're actually on the highway to hell then i've got when you point your finger at people there are three pointing back at you and then obviously it's like that isn't it and then those three are pointing back at you and then i've got repetition with the number three is significant and then I've got take a look at yourself and evaluate your heart. Sometimes I'll be pointing the finger at people as well. But then God will convict me if I'm in the wrong. <laughs> and then I'm like, actually, my bad. There are parts that I need to take responsibility for in this situation as well. Or what I've said about this person. Or I've judged them too harshly, etc, etc. So that's a lesson that all of us can take, whether we're under that spirit or not when we're pointing the finger at people we need to check our own houses first so for example going back to the little personal stories that i said about people judging me i was like if those people who judge me really had the holy spirit living in them they would see the holy spirit living in me we wouldn't have to agree on anything as i mentioned before and we may be at different stages of our journeys with christ 
but we can recognize the Holy Spirit in each other and we can feel it and those who know, know. And in those situations there, we wouldn't be pointing the finger at the other person, we'd be bringing them in and wanting to help them grow and learn more in Christ. Cause like, well, if someone's like really established in their journey with Christ and someone's only just starting their journey with Christ, like say they've just come out of like heavy new age or witchcraft or whatever it may be. And someone's been walking with Christ for 30, 40 years and they've got a really well established relationship with God. They would be happy that someone has decided to die to their flesh and live for Christ. Whereas someone under the religious spirit if they met someone who's just stepped out of witchcraft but they're actually heavily anointed by God and chosen by God, the religious spirit is going to hate that person, judge them and have them call them a witch, a demon, etc, etc. But God doesn't judge us on our past, he judges us on our heart. And so the difference between someone who is anointed, or not even anointed, but has definitely has the Holy Spirit within them, as I said, they recognise the Holy Spirit in someone else and won't go to attack someone else who is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And I've got here, even before we fully know that the Holy Spirit is living in us as chosen ones, we feel that energy or that vibe, which we now know is the Holy Spirit. So I can think of people that I've come across in my life and I'm just like, I love that person's energy. Like we might, we might even have different religions. We might have different ways of life different views on certain things but there's you can just tell that certain people genuinely have a good heart and I'm always drawn to people like that it's like I can feel it and other people will feel that too and that's the Holy Spirit living in and moving through others that we recognize but again the religious spirit sees that as an energy as an enemy sorry and will attack Someone who is actively walking in the spirit would also instantly recognise the spirit dwelling within someone else, even if that person isn't aware that the Holy Spirit is moving through them, but they're just someone who's pure hearted and always strives to do good, even if they're not fully aware of their walk with God. Someone who is anointed, someone who genuinely has the Holy Spirit in them will recognise that trait in them and they'll see that God made them that way and they won't attack them. Again, I've got, this is the spirit of the Pharisees, is what God's told me. A clear example of how those under the religious spirit attack those who are actually under the Holy Spirit can be found in John 10, and it's verse 22 to 33, and it says, this is when Jesus goes into the temple. So it says, at the time of the feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem it was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon so the Jews gathered around him and said to him how long will you keep us in suspense if you are the Christ to tell us plainly Jesus answered them I told you and you do not believe the works that I do in my father's name bear witness about me but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand my father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand I and the father are one the Jews picked up stones again to stone him Jesus answered them I have shown you many good works from the father for which of them are you going to stone me the Jews answered him, it is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. That there is how God's truly anointed ones get attacked by those who are under the religious spirit or the spirit of the Pharisees. It happens all the time. Jesus was out here doing good works in the name of God, the same way that us chosen ones and those who are anointed are just trying to do our best at doing God's will and spreading his word the way that he tells us to, the way that he instructs us to the best of our knowledge. So at the end of the day, we are human, so we are going to make mistakes. We're not perfect like Jesus because we're flawed. 
like we're gonna make mistakes but those who are under the influence of the holy spirit will know the same way he says his sheep will hear him those who are really under the holy spirit under the influence of the holy spirit will recognize others who are under the influence of the holy spirit but those who are under the influence of the religious spirit they won't hear it because they're blinded by it and they're deceived by this demonic spirit and see the real ones as the enemies the same way that they saw jesus as the enemy it's just the same thing it's nothing new under the sun so the next thing i've got here is when you judge a child of god walking in christ and it does not adhere to your skewed view of the scripture it hardens your heart more separating you further and further from god and closer to the enemy it's the same demonic energy that the witches and warlocks are under god confirmed this sorry that doesn't make sense the punctuation in this is so bad because it's just like everything was coming through and i'm just typing so let me just slow down so basically the religious spirit is the same spirit as that which witches and warlocks are under because they attack those who are doing the work of god as well except it's skewed it's more dangerous because if you're a witch or a witch if you're a warlock you're a warlock you know you're the enemy like you know you don't love god you want to work for the enemy cool i can respect that i can fully respect that because you know what you're doing but those under the religious spirit they're so blinded oh it's it's scary it's scary because they think that like i said they think they're doing god's work and they're really not and they're just getting pushed further and further away from god so yeah it hardens their hearts more so remember i mentioned about the unforgiveness unforgiveness will harden your heart so much so it will separate you further and further from god and closer and closer to the enemy ah oh, okay so that whole thing with the with it being the same energy as the witches and warlocks god then confirms this particular part to me via a video that I watched on the 7th of January. I can't remember which video it was. I didn't write it down. I'm sorry, otherwise I would have shared it below. Oh, whose video was it? I think it was a Marcus Rogers video, but I don't remember. And it's not the same one that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, but it was a similar message. So it will say the same thing, but not outright say witches and warlocks but it's the same energy those who know know anyways so as i was saying they have the same agenda which is to is extinguish the light of a real chosen one this is also why witches and warlocks can comfortably sit in churches because unfortunately many religious people are under the same entity so they're not going to expose each other they go unnoticed by those who don't have strong discernment or enough wisdom to even be aware. Then on top of that, the real anointed ones are often ostracised from religious churches, so it's less likely for them to be called out. That is um, the religious spirit, witches or warlocks, because obviously they're under the same energy, but someone who's truly anointed and walk in, um under the holy spirit who has discernment so they can it's like we can smell it almost unless they're really good at hiding it but then god will eventually reveal it to us anyways and expose it but sometimes we need confirmation and proofs we can't just be like you're a witch you're this you're that like there's ways of doing things but those who are under the authority of the religious spirit whether they're just someone who's lost or someone who's yeah someone who's lost and is being led by someone under the religious spirit or if it's someone who's actually just being led by the religious spirit they're not gonna see witches and warlocks sitting in church because it's the same it's the same energy holy spirit told me that this message about the religious spirit is a warning and i wrote it at the time and i can feel it now <laughs> i've written i felt an uneasiness in my heart when i heard that and i can feel that same feeling again now because it's it's scary um so i've got if you let the evil spirit of religion consume you it will have you hating a child of god a chosen one which means you hate god because they are a reflection of him on earth to build his kingdom on earth 
and then I've got now you can see how wicked this spirit is all while you believe the lie that you do what you do because you love God and have been led to believe that you're doing it for God's kingdom and then I've got it's for a kingdom all right the kingdom of darkness and then the next thing I've got is yes you can have a relationship with God and have religion but you can also have a relationship with God without being a part of a religion like me personally I personally never felt close to God while I was at church I do believe that one day God will find me a a church maybe a, an actual physical building of a church or maybe not where I will find my people I guess but for now I'm just walking that walk with him I have like a few people dotted around here or there where who I can have like my one-to-one -one churches with but it would be nice to have a, a real community and have a real church the way God intended church to be but anyways that's a tangent I even remember being at school once, I went to a Catholic school and um, a second Catholic secondary school and um, I remember a teacher talking about like saying something along the lines of oh you have to go to church and I was like but miss why do we have to go to church if God's everywhere I can just pray at home <laughs> and I got into trouble and it's not now, not till now as an adult I'm like that was the religious spirit <laughs> I literally just deeped it now like literally now that was the religious spirit because as I said before I never felt close to God in an actual church like when I'm at home when I'm in nature when I'm with other friends talking about um our own journeys with God like that's when I feel close to him and that's what real church is it's it's a way of life so then last two paragraphs almost at the end guys when you have a relationship with God, you'll receive information and wisdom that cannot be found in scripture because it's directly from God. Just like any close relationship we have here on earth, you tell those who you're close to more personal details, something that's private or a secret. A close relationship with God is no different from that and it's a two-way street. So for example, I tell God everything when i say everything i mean everything even things that you think would be embarrassing that you don't want to talk to god about i will talk to god about it like i can talk to god about clothes and what i'm gonna wear i can talk to him about my day i can talk to him about how i'm feeling i can talk to him about relationships I can I can literally talk to him about anything I can even talk to God about sex if I really want to I have had a conversation more than one conversation with God about things like that like I can literally talk to him about anything he knows what's in my head he knows what's in my heart anyway so why am I going to pretend I might as well just tell him because he knows anyways and because I share so much with him or should I say I willingly share even though he knows everything a lot of people don't give those things willingly to god he just knows it but they think they can hide it from god because they haven't said it we've all been there so because i i willingly give up that information he willingly gives me additional information that not many others know or things that aren't necessarily in scripture because i have that jeremiah 33 3 relationship with god which i am so so grateful for and i'm just going to pull that scripture up now the version of this piece of scripture that i really like is the niv version which says call to me and i will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know so that means it you can't search it you can't just be like oh it's in this scripture oh it's here oh it's there because it's not all there like if god is all knowing of everything how can we limit everything that god knows to this like that's actually an insult to god when you actually deep that's an insult to god obviously everything's not going to be in here even if you have this and the apocrypha with the other books that were taken out and then there's probably other books that we don't even know about that have been hidden because a lot of this has been hidden because obviously the enemy doesn't want us to to know everything 
And even if we did have all those books, we still wouldn't know everything because only God is all knowing. The enemy isn't all knowing. The enemy has to study and watch and monitor to work out how to attack people and create strategies. And that's why we go through these battles and we gain wisdom so that we know how to defeat the enemy and his tactics. And that's why he then comes and attacks us in another way because you know new levels new devils because then he's watching or how are they moving now are they okay this isn't working anymore what are they doing now so then he watches us whether it be through people monitoring spirits etc 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 then he's like okay this strategy will then work on this person that's another tangent but that's because he's not all knowing we're not all knowing god's the only one that's all knowing and that's why he can share unsearchable things with those which are like secrets. And sometimes I'll be sitting and something will just come through and be like, I didn't know that, but it makes sense. And it's honestly a privilege that God tells me secrets. I feel very, very honoured, humbled all those things so I'm like sometimes I don't even feel like I'm even worthy of I'm like what little old me you're telling me but then at the same time on the flip side even though I'm not perfect I do know my heart is pure and my heart seeks him all the time and I guess it's because of that why he decides to tell me and others because obviously it's not just me certain things and that's also why a lot of people who really do have prophetic gifts a lot of our messages are aligned because he chooses who he who he reveals these things to so for example i got this message in november and i didn't get my confirmation until today as i'm recording which is january the 10th and i was like oh my gosh this is basically the message that god gave me because he gave it to him as well and it's probably another or some like person on YouTube or not even on YouTube that has written down or given someone that same message or maybe said it in church as a sermon or whatever because God reveals that information to us and then obviously he then confirms it via scripture or other ways to verify what's been said that has come from him. So as I was saying, I can talk to God about literally anything. So I was like, nothing is off the table. He already knows my heart, what's on my mind and everything I say before I say it. So what have I got to hide? And because I make the effort to get to know him in different ways, he tells me those Jeremiah 33, three secrets. Then the last paragraph I've got is, there are so many ways to get close to God. I spend time in the word. I listen to Psalms in my car or at home. I meditate on the word or listen to scripture based meditations. Sometimes I go for walks and talk to him. I lo actually love spending time in nature because that's where I feel the absolute closest to him. Sometimes I formally pray. Sometimes I just have regular conversations with him. What else have I got here? So yeah, some of them are like really trivial. Sometimes it's really deep philosophical stuff. Like there's so many layers to God. And I think sometimes Yes, he's on a pedestal because he created us and he's our God. But at the same time, you can talk to him on a level. Like, yes, I have that respect and reverence for him because he is God. But I also have that closeness to him where I can, I can literally catch jokes with him and chat absolute <laughs> rubbish and just be in stitches. Like, it doesn't always have to be serious it doesn't always have to be formal i don't always have to be on my knees like we can just chill and have a vibe sometimes i watch movies with god and he gives me insight in the movies not necessarily deep insight sometimes it's just like something funny sometimes it's something deep it honestly just depends on the mood so yeah that's just some of the ways my personal relationship has developed with him I tell him all my worries, he sees all of my emotions, I even get mad at him, I shout at him, I, like, it's that real, because he knows what I'm feeling anyway, so I might as well 
completely vent to him and tell him how I'm feeling, how frustrated I am about how life's going or how I feel like he's treating me or whatever, I'm saying life's not fair or whatever's going on. I feel conviction when I mess up. Um, and it feels like when I get conviction, I can't speak for anyone else, but it's like that feeling you get when someone that you really respect, like a parent or a teacher or someone, whoever's in your life that you really respect and admire, when they say that they're disappointed in you and you feel so bad. It's like that feeling. That's how conviction feels for me. But yeah, but he is my parent. He's my Abba. So yeah, you you get the point. So yeah, we have a close relationship and that's without me being in religion or going to church but like I said before you can have religion and relationship but you can also have religion without the relationship and that's where it gets dangerous and that's where you can be tricked into taking on the religious spirit and actually becoming an enemy of God without even realizing so please take heed if you feel led to share this message with someone please share it I hope you found it insightful and I hope it has given you the information that you were looking for or has confirmed certain things in your own life. And my final note is, remember, church is not a building. It's a coming together in the name of Jesus and it's a way of life. Thank you for watching this video. Again, if we vibe, join the tribe, make sure you like, comment, share and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you're notified of when I have new content out and I will see you in the next video. I love you all.